Okay, here's some problems associated with um, the absolute value inequality and interval and set notation. I also want to add some polynomial inequalities here. So let's start with start with these. I think um, we've gone over enough that you can do these. So why don't you, this, these are your homework. I'll show you the answers and you're going to want to show your um, all your work in, um, you turn in your homework here. Okay, let's look at these. You're going to want to show your work. Again, I'm not showing my work, so show your work. Um, it, when you submit your assignment, you can check your work. Notice I just wrote X such that if there is no set listed, like we've always said X is a member of the set of real numbers, it's assumed to be the most perfect set, which is known as the set of real numbers. So um, here's your set builder notation, your interval notation, your graph notation. Notice this is a less than, so it's inside. Notice this is a greater than, so it's the wings. Um, and this is how we represent these solutions. Notice less than negative four. This is an absolute value. It's all positive. It's never going to be less than negative four. Um, I think this was a typo. I think I intended to do the second one down here. This is also an empty set because an absolute value, it can't be negative. So it's um, never, never less than negative three. If you've got it greater than negative three, all real numbers, anything you plug in there will work. And you'll find if it's greater than, you're going to get wings that, um, you know, a company, it's a union, it's going to include absolutely everything. So any value you plug in, think about that one. So let's get some polynomial examples. Let's start by looking at a, a quadratic. A quadratic is a type of polynomial. And I'm going to look at this one, x squared minus x minus 6. It factors in this way, so we know the zeros are at 3 and negative 2. We can um, complete the square, you guys have this skill, and say x minus 1 half minus 25 fourths, so I know this bottommost vertex is 1 quarter comma negative 6 and a quarter, or sorry, 1 half, negative 6 and a quarter. Now, if we're asked to, um, to solve an inequality for this polynomial is greater than 0, I'm looking for where this represents p of x or represents the y value, where that expression is above the x-axis. And I can look at this graph and say these are the values where y is positive here. So I can say uh, in terms of the x values, and let me actually um, put this in a color. And here in pink is interval notation representing where this is above the x-axis or positive. If I look at this, this expression, this is my y value less than or equal to zero, I can do the other set where it hangs down below. These are where the y value is negative or less than zero. And I've got an equal sign there, so I'm going to put a bracket between negative two and three. So actually, I've done a lot more work here up above. Um, in solving these two inequalities, if you only have these two inequalities, you get to look at something a little bit simpler, a little bit less. You don't have to look at as much information. So I'm looking at the exact same problem. I'm going to find the intervals or the, the regions where this expression is greater than zero. That's the same thing as here. Here it is in factored form is greater than zero. My process is to find the critical values, which are the values where this left-hand side is equal to zero, and place those values on the number line. Now, I want to list them as being open holes because there is no equal here. And then I'm going to test intervals and determine if it makes the original statement true or false. So here's my number line. Here's the negative 2 open hole, and I'm going to slide this over a little bit. And here's the 3, and I'm going to prick pick a pretty point. So when I test the intervals, I pick a pretty point. Pick a pretty point. So I want to choose a point that's going to make my life easier. So if I were to choose a number in this interval, anything bigger than three, and I like thinking in terms of choosing a hundred, and if I choose a hundred, wow, that's going to be a thousand, ten thousand, minus 100 minus 6, that's still going to be positive, isn't it? So that's going to be true. If I were to choose a value between negative 2 and 3, let's say 0. If I plug in a 0, that's awfully convenient. It will make this statement false. If I choose a number in this interval, this interval may be 100 
I don't even have to go that large. Negative 10 would work. I would determine that it would make this statement true because I'm taking that large number and squaring it. This value here has the biggest impact. So this is true. So based on this sign line, this number, sign, S-I-G-N, sign line, that's really what, um, what I like to call them because they get a lot more complicated here. Those are the two regions where it's true, and I can, on the basis of this graph, solve this by just stating those critical values, testing intervals, and then putting this in um, interval. I'm going to use interval notation, negative infinity, negative 2, 3 to infinity. Let's try a polynomial of higher degree. So here's a polynomial. I want to see where this expression, if I multiply it out, the first term is going to be an x to the fourth power plus whatever else. And I want to see if where the intervals, values for x, that make that less than zero. So my process is if it's in factored form, it's kind of sweet. I can say, what are my critical values? And I can look at this and say, well, what are the values that would make that equal to zero? Then I've got negative 1 positive 5, negative 8, and positive 16. Looks like that would be somewhere over here, 16. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 intervals to test. So test those values, plug in numbers, and determine, there's my 16, determine does it make it true or false. Pause the video and check out which makes it true or false. So after I plug in regions, plug plug in points from each of these regions into the original. I can determine whether it makes it true or false. And I set up this line and I can say, OK, the solution to this inequality, I'm hoping you see it up above, you can't really see it all, is negative 8 to negative 1 union. Notice I'm going to read this left to right. It's really nice to be able to do that, 5 to 16. So this is the solution. This is the solution to that inequality. Some of you may notice that it alternates, alternates, false, true, false, true, false. Um, yeah, it will unless you have an even exponent here. So let's check out one of those. So here's another polynomial. If I were to multiply this out, that would end up being an x squared times an x squared times an x. So this would be an x to the fifth plus whatever else after I FOIL it out. And I want to look for where it's greater than zero, where it, this function would graph above that axis. So I'm going to start by saying this is, this is a place where, if, if it's equal to zero, negative 7. And I'm going to mark it with an E that it's even. And you'll see what happens. A positive 4. I'm going to also mark that it's even. And the even refers to the power on the exponent. And negative 1. Okay, and it may not have put that in decent style. So I want to test values from each of these intervals. So choose intervals and determine what makes it true or false, and let's observe what happens, because it doesn't just alternate in sign. So notice when you plug in the values, you've got true. And this, when I move across an even power to that factor, I stay... I stay the same. This was true, true. It didn't alternate between true and false. This exponent here is an odd number. It's 1. And it does change sign when I test in a value. And the same is it does not change. It's false there. It's going to be false there if this is even. But I could check values from these intervals, pick a pretty point, pick points that are pretty, and um, see if it makes it true or false. So the solution to this inequality in graph notation is this. In interval notation is negative 1, comma, negative 4. I need to be sure. That's a positive 4, sorry. Um, I need to be sure that I exclude that 4. And that's how I do it in interval notation.